Hmm. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll make another Steam Deck video then. <laughs> Hey friends, how's it going? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, which you might actually not be this time. Hi, my name's Mike. It's really nice to meet you. So just before we get into today's video, I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you for all the love on the last video. I am stunned, confused, overwhelmed but most of all I'm just incredibly humbled and so grateful for all the kindness you've shown me and um, thank you all so so much and I'm just so glad that the first video that caught a bit of attention I didn't make any silly mistakes in you know handheld I'm horrified so anyway I thought I'd follow that up today and make a video about five of my favorite games that I recommend you play on Steam Deck my favorite console So anyway, first game, Inscription. Inscription is such a special game. It's a roguelike deck building card game developed by a small team over at Daniel Mullins Games. And it's one that's hard to talk about because part of what makes it so special is experiencing the surprises and the twists and turns for yourself. But essentially it starts out as a creepy atmospheric card game where sacrificing your own cards is part of the strategy. Which I know sounds kind of lame, but it's actually really fun and addictive. You play against a creepy, brilliantly animated old man who's holding you hostage in a hut to play this card game with. And if you lose the game, you die. But every time you die, you develop your deck, learn something new, and start to uncover the mystery as to what on earth is going on in this game. Eventually, the old guy allows you to stand up and walk around the room that you're playing this game in. And this is where things start to get really, really interesting because the room itself starts to turn into a puzzle to solve and holds clues as to how to escape the hut and this crazy old man. What follows is a set of mind-bending dark twists and turns, which in my opinion is nothing short of genuine genius. Again, I can't go into detail, but just trust me when I say this game will blow your mind. Even after the credits roll, there's a whole ton of stuff to learn about this game. Highly, highly recommend. Next game, Near Automata. Oh my God, where do I start with this game? Near Automata is without a doubt one of my favorite games of all time. Might even be my favorite. I played it in a space where I was feeling a bit uninspired by games and it just totally flips that around by slapping me in the face by one of the most profound, well-written, hard-hitting narratives I've ever experienced in any form of media. It's a fast-paced action RPG where you play as Android 2B who in an apocalyptic future is sent down from the moon to save Earth from an army of robot aliens that are taking over the planet. Sounds very JRPG, doesn't it? I love it. The combat is really fast and fun and satisfying with a massive variation in weapons, combat styles and special abilities. And it has my favorite thing where if you hit the evade button at the right time, you do this cool slow-mo flippy dodgy thing. Any game that does this just makes me giddy instant 10 out of 10 but where this game really shines is in its story similar to inscription the beauty in the story comes from experiencing the twists and turns for yourself so i can't talk too much about it but essentially what starts as quite a typical jrpg quickly turns into something way more interesting and profound there are multiple endings to the game and you need to reach ending 5 or ending e to reach its true conclusion and each ending will ramp up the story more and more and more so i was just like Mm. Huh. No, no, no. I don't want to do this anymore. Ending E honestly made me feel emotions that I don't think I've ever felt before. And I remember after the credits rolled just laughing out of sheer amazement as to what this game pulled off which was shortly followed by tears, as this game is just so hard hitting. It sounds really over the top, but this game genuinely made me look at the world a bit different. Lim. Oh, and I nearly forgot. The soundtrack. Holy shit. Some of 
the best video game music ever made and it just fits into the sort of vibe of this game perfectly. I'm essentially like a music teacher in real life and this gets my massive stamp of somewhat professional approval. Best game music ever. Don't be put off by the sexy maid stuff. Don't give up after ending A. This game has much more than meets the eye. Highly, highly recommend. Next, Gabe. Katana Zero. Now look, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that looks okay. But trust me when I say this game is an absolute blast to play and it's backed up by a crazy story filled of great twists and turns. You can see there's a pattern here, can't you? Any good story game, I am just all over. You play as an edgy, drug-addicted samurai boy with amnesia in the future who can manipulate time. You're set out on several missions to assassinate targets laid out to you by a mysterious organisation. Sounds pretty JRPG, doesn't it? As you move throughout the game, you start to uncover the truth behind your past, the drugs that are being administered to you, and why you're being used to assassinate these targets. The story is incredible. It really takes you to places you don't see coming. The ending does leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger, but I believe they're working on a sequel, and when you factor in this game was made by one person, it's totally understandable and justifiable as to maybe why this was cut a tiny bit short, but don't let that put you off. This story is still better than 99% of other games. The gameplay is ridiculously fun. It only takes one hit to kill you, but because you respawn almost instantly, it makes tackling each stage feel like a fair but challenging task. It's really fast paced, and when you balance in being able to slow time, reflect bullets, and throw your objects around the room, you've got yourself a recipe for a game that makes you feel like you're drinking a can of monster. Tastes like Katana Zero. I don't even like Monster. Once you're used to the controls, you just fly through areas like an absolute pro. And it feels so incredibly empowering to clear an area on your first try. Dodging, reflecting bullets, slicing through boys. And you even get a replay after each cleared area, which makes you just feel like some kind of MLG pro watching through a highlight reel. It's all just so satisfying and fun. And it's for that reason that it's one of the only games that I've replayed more than once. Fourth, Gabe. Out of Wilds. Outer Wilds is a game like no other game. You play as a little alien boy who is given the launch codes to a rocket ship and given the instructions simply to go out into space and explore. Sounds pretty typical, right? Wrong. Outer Wilds handles freedom and exploration in a way that I've never experienced in a game before. It gives you the incentive to explore the world in an organic, natural way that's led by genuine curiosity rather than a billion markers and awful side quests. I'm feeling quite like a fossil today. Would you be a deer and get me a copy of the newspaper? There is no clear, determined route. You simply travel to wherever it is that you see and want to go. And on your journey, you'll stumble across hilarious characters and just crazy worlds. And you'll piece together a beautiful and tragic story that feels completely unscripted and unique. Like a couple games on this list, it's one that you just really need to experience yourself to really understand. If you do give this one a go, I really recommend sticking it out past the first couple hours as it can feel a little bit confusing at first with the amount of freedom this game gives you. But if you stick with it, I think you'll have a really beautiful time with this game. In this age of bloated and uninspiring open world games, Outer Wilds is just a huge breath of fresh air. Last Gabe, Dragon Quest XI. Now chances are you've definitely already heard of this game. It's one of the biggest gaming franchises in RPG history, but I just couldn't leave it out of this list because it's just the perfect pairing with the Steam Deck. I actually played this game a couple years back on my PC, which I now really regret because this game is just so comforting and sometimes there's nothing more uncomfortable than sitting at a desk. But this game on a sofa or in bed, it's so sleepy and soft and slow that it's almost like reading a bedtime story. It doesn't do anything crazy or new. It's very much just like a classic straight up JRPG. Typical characters, typical plot, typical world. But it does all those things so incredibly well. The music, wonderful. The characters, super hilarious, super likeable. The turn-based combat system is just solid, tried and true, but with a couple modern twists. And it just works perfectly with the Steam Deck because of its slower, more tactical nature. The world and the locations you visit and the colours are all just beautiful 
literally feels like you're inside a storybook and the whole thing just feels like a big warm nostalgic hug and takes me straight back to playing Dragon Quest X on my PlayStation 2 back in the day. Okay, so those are some recommendations for me, for you to get playing on Steam Deck, but what I really wanna know is what games do you recommend I play on Steam Deck? I'm gonna be playing three games that you guys recommend in a later video, so now that you know what kind of games I'm into, I would really love to hear the kind of things that you recommend. And quickly, I just wanna say another thank you for the crazy amount of support on that last video. I'm still sort of like coming to terms with it and what to do. I'm gonna make a video sort of more around me and the channel and stuff shortly, but again, thank you so, so much. I've got a really big project on at work at the minute, which is gonna require a lot of time and attention, but I'm gonna try my absolute best to put out videos regularly um, it's just tricky when trying to balance a full-time job. So I really appreciate you bearing with me while I sort of sort my life out. But just so you know, I really enjoy doing these kind of videos and I just appreciate you being here so much. Thank you again. Thanks again, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you really soon. Thanks.